Hi, this is Dave. Welcome to the weekly market recap, closing out the week for Friday, April the 4th, 2014. So let's uh, let's just take a look at the uh, Dow on the daily chart, as we usually do. Let me grab my pen here. And, you know, just not a lot of interesting stuff going on here. We did have a breakout of these highs here. You can see these highs. We did, you know, break out for a couple of days above those highs. And then we printed a doji, and then on Friday we just had a pretty hellacious sell-off right into the 20 period, right into the 20 period, that's some terrible drawing, the 20 period exponential moving average. So essentially where we're at is, um, you know, we're still flirting with the highs, but we're really nowhere. Um, we do have a developing trend line coming into play right around, let's see here right around here it looks like a fairly clean trend line I like the angle of ascent the angle of ascent is um, you know it's about a 45 degree angle I like to look for those kinds of angles and you can see here I mean we really have a lot of resistance at these highs um, and we have you know we've we've got market structure here where we're putting in higher highs higher lows now that this high has been put in play but I think the more relevant thing to look at here is it's not uncommon for you know the stock indices to break out and then pull back but one of the things that I've been looking at let's just jump over to the momentum charts and let me just refresh this so if we look at the Dow uh, if we look at the Dow on the daily chart you can see the daily chart here of the Dow is has fired a long Darvis squeeze two bars ago and the weekly chart is uh, getting ready to fire a Darvis squeeze it's actually it actually has fired but it pulled back so if you look at here's the daily chart here's the weekly chart of the Dow and we broke out of this range that we were talking about last week of the Darvis box 16,444 was the high it printed a long signal at 16,441 now it's not uncommon to break out pull back into support we did hold the 21 exponential moving average you know you've got the squeeze firing off here you've got blue Hakanashis and then you know that we do have the potential to break back through these highs and to print a target on the daily chart around uh, 16,972 but what I find very interesting here is that you've got this uh, Darvis squeeze setting up on the daily chart you've also got this Darvis squeeze setting up on the weekly chart this is pretty pretty darn significant you've got um, it fired you know it broke out of the weekly range here it fired along around 16,000 uh, let me just clear this off 16,476 it's fairly close and it has a target as high as 17,748 on a weekly basis so this could take several months to play out if it does that is if it does actually follow through but one of the things I find very interesting about this is the confluence between the daily and the weekly chart that's pretty significant a signal on its own is um, you know valid um, but having these momentum charts kick in the daily kicking in close to the where the weekly's kicking in and to have them both firing off is very significant so I'm keeping an eye on this and uh, it looks like the Dow is really leading and it's the only one that's really fired off a signal if I just jump over to for example the S&P the S&P also fired off a signal the other day and it's printing a target it doesn't have a signal on the weekly chart although it did break the Darvis box but it fired off around 1880 uh, and then it has a target as high as 1938 so those are just guidelines this is very interesting if you look at the Nasdaq the Nasdaq actually looks very weak the, the Nasdaq is putting in lower highs now on the daily chart but it is actually right at the um, the weekly 20 period moving average which is pretty you know quite significant so the question is are we going to hold support here on the weekly chart and are these indices all going to come back into alignment with each other and start pushing higher or you know is is this divergence between the sister indices you know all these indices 
is the divergence um, telling us something as well? So we're going to need to keep an eye on this. I thought that that move in the Dow was pretty significant. It can actually pull back deeper before following through. If we look at the Russell, the Russell's holding the 21 period moving average as well. It fired a Darvis squeeze going back weeks ago and then it pulled back into support. But it looks more like the NASDAQ where now you've got a lower stack box. It actually fired a short signal back in here and it put in a lower if you notice here, it put in a lower high. Um, if it breaks this point here, that's going to, you know, spell a little bit of trouble. But now, if you notice, you've got a little bit of a positive divergence going in momentum here, uh, at least off of this squeeze indicator. So I thought I should point that out. It's quite, it's quite significant. But really, what you want to see is you want to see all of these indices moving in tandem with each other and firing off signals at the same time. That would, you know, give me confidence that this is a much much bigger move ahead. Um, right now, all we have is a pretty significant uh, indication in the Dow. But if the other indices are not following suit, uh, that could spell trouble for the for this signal. So just keeping an eye on it, thought it might be, um, uh, it is a very, um, it is quite significant. When I see things like that, I pay attention to the confluence between these signals on the daily and the weekly chart. Let's just jump back over to the more traditional charts. I'm just going to try and... Uh, you know, I'm not going to look at the uh, the sister indices on these charts. I'm going to look at the, uh, because we did on the momentum charts, I'm going to look at the transports quickly. So the transports look a lot like the Dow. They look, you know, very similar. And um, if you look at, you know, where, you know, this was a previous peak, looking to see if we're going to find support somewhere in this zone here, around 75, 74. And let's take a look at... Let me just pause this video very quickly. Sorry, I just had to pause the video quickly there. Throat was really dry. Let's take a look at gold. So gold looks interesting to me, so I'm just going to jump to it. I was talking about, um, I think I was talking about, if I wasn't talking about it on the video, maybe I was talking to a few of uh few of my trading friends here in the uh, the trading the live trading room here uh, we were talking about gold is in an interesting spot here because we've been in this sort of intermediate uptrend uh, we did you know pull back significantly but that pullback if you notice the pullback from this low to this high was actually a 50 percent retracement you can see that here uh, there's the 50 to 618 you pulled back into that zone and then it looked like you were starting to get a footing um, let's see. You're starting to get like a bottoming pattern of footing. You broke this trend line here. Uh, you put in an evening star pattern, candlestick pattern, where you've got you know a candlestick, a lower candlestick. The next one doesn't go any lower, and then it breaks the high. So you've got that pattern going on right in here where it broke the trend line, and now you're pushing back up into 20 period moving average resistance. It's now resistance. But the question is like, are we going to get a bigger move out of this? Is this, you know, a significant spot uh, to potentially get long looking for a move? So at this point in time, on the short term, what I'd be looking for is um, just a retracement of this last move here, which could bring us into, you know, if you smack dab it in the middle, we've got a support zone in there around 1340. So that would be an interesting area to look at right around 1340. We closed around... 1303 so we've got the potential for maybe another 40 points to the upside potentially $40 an ounce so but the interesting thing will be to see are we actually going to break you know this uh, 618 around 1346 come up and retest these highs or even potentially put in a higher high so I think we um, from a seasonal perspective we don't really get a lot of strength in gold I think until July uh, so, you know, I'm just keeping my eye on this. This would be uh, an interesting short term trade, um, primarily because the risk reward is really interesting below this low here. And, uh, you know, you're starting to push off to the high side. You've got a lot of room for momentum to shift back up to the high side, you know, and to get a, an oscillation, you know, to the high side like you did here, for example, you know, where you where you got this um, sort of swing move this sort of swing move. So this is um, this is interesting. Uh, you're right into the MACD zero line support. So uh, this to me looks like the most interesting thing in the market, you know, that I'm aware of at this point in time. So let's take a look at silver. 
Uh, silver looks similar, not as strong. It came off that 20 period moving average. Let's take a quick look at copper. You know, copper looks, you know, copper doesn't look the same because momentum is already topping out on the stochastic. Uh, let's take a look at platinum. You know, platinum looks like it's, uh, you know, platinum looks decent. Um, okay, let's jump over to the crude oil market. Crude oil is a little bit baffling to me right now because we came into this 101.32. We broke it. We did put in a higher high here uh, or higher low rather and a higher, well, a higher low and a higher high, right? You've got this sort of market structure in play. You held the 5 ATR 20. You put in a lower high here or a higher high rather. And then it looked like you were putting in a lower high here and then it pulled back below this 101.32. And now we're right back and we closed right at that key level. It's kind of like a line in the sand. It's definitely a key level. We've had this on our charts for quite a while and we closed right at it. So I'm, I'm looking to see if we're going to break this swing high. And if we do, then we could challenge these highs and potentially move higher. So that's what I'm looking at. Um, we, you know, I'm not that. You know, momentum looks like it's sort of topped a little bit and it needs to reset itself. MACD's holding zero line support. So this looks like an interesting scenario. I'll call it, it looks like an interesting scenario. I think you're going to get some major resistance at these highs. Um, but, you know, this is, this to me looks a little bit, um, it's interesting because I don't quite understand it just from the perspective of, you know, this looks like a lower, um, you know, this looks like resistance. To me, like if you were to drop a trend line here, actually, let's just do that. If you were to drop a trend line right here, you know, that looks, but it also looks a bit like a, like a small pennant or a, a triangle, doesn't it? So this is, you know, this to me, I'm keeping my eye on it. I'm not really quite sure what's going on here, but if we can break out above this level again, then things are going to get really interesting. I'm going to be looking at this high, you know, as a potential target and then looking to see if we can tag that 110 to 115 that we were talking about going back several weeks ago. Um, you know, that being said, that being said, it's, it's, it's a bit of a long shot right now, but it just, it's doing something I'm not expecting it to do. So, um, I just find it quite interesting. I'm going to keep my eye on that. Let's take a look at, um, okay. Let's take a look at natural gas. Natural gas just looks dead in the water to me. You know, it's just in, it's, it's sideways in between these, um, ping ponging in between these support resistance levels. Let's take a look at USD CAD. So USD CAD came off pretty hard. It looked like we were going to head up to new highs and we did almost around 113. And then we came all the way back into, you know, just above 109. So the question is, are we going to hold this area? Um, you know, momentum starting to, to, um, bottom out a bit. Um, are we going to hold this area? Are we going to hold the 5 ATR 20? Are we going to push back up to the high side? I don't like the fact that it broke this trend line here. So I'm looking to see if maybe we're going to do this and then that. So I'm a little bit nervous about this situation and I'm just sort of monitoring it and keeping an eye on it. Um, let's take a look at the dollar index. So dollar index looks like it found a short term bottom around this long term support. It broke out of this intermediate down channel and it's just sort of going slightly higher sideways to slightly higher uh, euro euro doesn't look very interesting although it is at trend line support um, but it's below a dollar 38 okay so we're just kind of keeping an eye on that and let's take a look at um, let's take a look at the 30 year bond still sideways still in that range 10 year you know, still sideways, still in this range. It's holding this sort of, uh, let's see, this this Fib retracement here from this low to this high. So it's holding that key um, that key zone there, sort of halfway back. But you know, we've got we've got a lot of snaking here. You could almost treat this like if you were to draw a triangle on this indicator here, you could almost treat this like a, um, you know, the potential it's coiling and it's going to break out. So we're probably should be expecting some kind of move out of this because you can see momentum has been coiling and uh, it'll be interesting to see which way it breaks out of there. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. Let's take a look at the, um, 
the inverse of the 10 year. Let's take a look at the yield. TNX.x. And same thing, it's just sideways here. It's below that 3% inflection point. So I think that's all I really have. There's not really a heck of a lot going on in these markets this week. In summary, the only thing that really looks interesting to me is, um, you know, the Dow. Is it actually going to, um, you know, is it going to follow through with those momentum long signals? The confluence on the daily and the weekly chart? And is it going to pull the other indices with it? Or are the other indices going to, you know, create a failed signal in the Dow? So I'm keeping an eye on that. Uh, and the gold looks interesting to me. Other than that, nothing really looks all that interesting. So just a quick reminder, um, we do have, let me just pull up the website. We do have a, uh, let's see here. If you go to the CSTA.org, we do have an upcoming Oakville chapter meeting next Wednesday. And... Uh, we're going to have uh, Don Vilu coming out to speak. Don is always welcome at the CSTA Oakville chapter. Love his work, love his presentations. Um, we're really looking forward to uh, the seasonality update and to see what's you know what's going on from a seasonal perspective. So he's going to be talking about seasonality in Canadian and global markets. Uh, you won't want to miss this. You can check out Don's site at timingthemarket.ca. Uh, really looking forward to this. Hope to see you there. You can register right from the CSTA main page again. You just come to the CSTA.org. If you're not a member of the CSTA, you should probably consider it. It's very reasonably priced and uh, focused on your technical analysis education. So just come on over to uh, the main page, click on the Oakville Region Chapter CSTA meeting, and that'll give you everything you need to register for the event right here. Okay. So good trading, good investing. We'll look forward to seeing you at this update or at the next video update. All the best.